Hello and welcome back to Dating 30 People at Once. Dating 30 People at Once is a marriage game show where you win someone's hand in marriage by dating 30 people at once. Given that there's 24 hours in a day, that comes out to exactly 48 minutes per person per day, uh, which scientists say is enough to fall in love with someone. I think. Maybe. Yes, I am talking about The Bachelorette this week after talking about Pokemon cards last week. What of it? You wanna fight? A few months back, Claire Crowley made headlines by becoming the world's <laughs> oldest Bachelorette. Now, Claire is only 39 years old, but, but they make it seem like she's 106. I expected way more from the oldest Bachelorette. After they announced Claire as The Bachelorette, which as a reminder is a television show where you win marriage by dating 30 people at once, it came out the cast the guys, the 30 people that Claire will be dating at once came out, like their cast photos and stuff, and everybody noticed that they were all young as shit. <laughs> and they were like, wait a second, we just patted you on the back, ABC, for, for being progressive and casting the world's oldest old lady as the bachelorette. And now she's dating a bunch of 25 year old stud muffins? Uh-uh-uh. And so ABC was like, okay, fine we will fire a couple of those stud muffins and hire a few slightly older ones. And then everybody was like, okay. Claire made history as the oldest Bachelorette and she's now making history again with the shortest season of The Bachelorette. And then these rumors start coming out that Claire's you know, running away with one of the cast members and like leaving the show early. And then that bubbled to a head by us finding out that they were gonna cast a second Bachelorette, Tasha Adams from Colton season of The Bachelor, which by the way, that guy turned out to be a horrible person. Check out my old video on that and watch it knowing that uh, he's actually a really bad guy and he stalked his ex um, and she got a restraining order against him. So maybe that whole, that whole fence jumping drama, maybe we shouldn't have gotten so excited about that. He just jumped the fence. So Claire as a Bachelorette was almost immediately overshadowed by this news. And on top of that, COVID became a worldwide sensation and they moved the entire production to La Quinta Resort. So instead of traveling all around the world to various locations that will give the Bachelor production team tax breaks, they have to just stay in, in one place um, to receive their tax breaks. So the show was delayed, and when it was finally time for the show to return, no one was invested in Claire, the world's oldest senior citizen bachelorette. I also want to point out that Claire is like 39 years old. She's a beautiful, talented, like smart woman. Uh, all of the previews paint it like this lady is on death's door. I'm 39. This might just be my last chance. When in reality, she's on a reality show that will end in three months or a few weeks and go on with her long life. Because the bachelorette knows that we know what happens, uh, it seems like they're editing it in a, like just to get Claire out of there and get Tasha in. I don't know what that means. Like, okay, do we get a new Bachelorette in here? Speaking of out with the old and in with the new, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Ridge. My old wallet is big, bulky, and it hurts my butt. My new wallet is small, sleek, futuristic, and my butt loves it. The Ridge wallet has all the room you'll need for cards and cash. And I need a lot of room for cash. What, you don't believe my wild and outlandish claims? You don't have to. You can also check out the over 30,000 five-star reviews. And if that's not good enough for you, there's also a lifetime warranty and you can test drive it for 45 days. Get 10% off your order with free worldwide shipping and returns by heading over to ridge.com slash Jarvis, that's my name, and using promo code Jarvis, also my name, at checkout. Link in the doobly-doo. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Uh, now back to The Bachelorette. So who is Claire? Who is who is this oldest bachelorette? Is it just some lady that they plucked out of the local nursing home? No, silly. She's a longtime veteran of the Bachelor franchise. She was on The Bachelor. I would never want my children having a father like you. She got engaged on Bachelor Winter Games, which is apparently a show. She's been on Bachelor in Paradise. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't worked. And this is Claire's last chance. It's her last chance at love. So what is Claire looking for in a partner? She wants them to show up. That's it. Proud of you for just showing up. Show up. Showing up for me. That's all she needs. All in all, Claire seems like a perfectly nice person, but what happens when you're in this like machine of The Bachelor is that they 
kind of dramatize every element of everything, to be honest. For starters, uh, coronavirus, ever heard of it? The contestants on the show had to quarantine before before filming started, and they even turned that into like an over-dramatized plot point. We were gonna start filming in just a couple days, but then because of the pandemic, we shut down. I hear you, but I don't think anyone in America is relating to this because you're on television right now. <laughs> you're, you're getting like fame and stuff out of this. So it's like, I'm sorry, um, but people are dying is all I'm trying to say. Hey everybody, it's Editing Jarvis. Something I noticed just while watching back some of these clips is how obviously edited the dialogue is. Like, listen to this. We were gonna start filming in just a couple days, but then because of the pandemic, we shut down. I feel like every single word of that sentence was taken from a different place. <laughs> it really just goes to show that they can make you say anything on this show. I originally thought she was being really dramatic, but it was actually the show that was being really dramatic. <laughs> so uh, you're off the hook this time, Claire. The first episode starts with showing us like the experience that all the contestants had to go through, through like, getting tested and quarantining and stuff. They really treat COVID like it's not something we're all experiencing right now. At any point I could have caught this disease and this could be over and this could be over. At any point this could all be over. Also, it's just like they dramatize her thinking about potentially getting COVID. That's on everyone's mind. Uh, also, you're allowed to go outside. I don't know why they have her on the couch on a time lapse. Like she's just been sitting in a single room for the past two weeks. She's looking out the windows like they won't let her out. It was so hard being on this couch, waiting to be the star of a television program. And also, this is a position that most of us do not get to be in because we don't get to rent out an entire resort and hang out with a bunch of people in a bubble. This is like, uh, this is, this is, this is Kardashian sh right here. Claire, I got your final test results. Is Chris Harrison a doctor? You are 100% clear to go. Free and clear, ready to be the bachelorette. That's what the doctor said when she finished your test. You're free and clear, ready to be the bachelorette. <laughs> To be officially cleared? <laughs> All the animals and nature are like, you're the bachelorette, <laughs> thank God. The squirrels, the birds were singing, <laughs> flowers blooming, all because Claire is the bachelorette. To be officially cleared feels so good. This feels like a drug commercial. <laughs> like they talk about being clear so much, I feel like they're about to advertise Claritin. <laughs> oh my God, the birds are singing. Where else on this planet would I get a chance to date 30 amazing men? Anywhere else on this planet? Do you mean at the same time? There are 30 men in other places on the planet, Claire. So not only do we have a time lapse of Claire sitting on a couch for, I don't know, probably 25 minutes. It didn't seem like she, <laughs> she did very much. They also made all the dudes vlog their, their travel and how excited they are to go meet Claire. And then we meet the guys, but here's the thing you need to know about the guys. You don't need to know anything about the guys. You only need to know about one guy um, because that's all anyone is ever talking about throughout the entire, the entirety of Claire's season. And it's Dale. 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 Claire, my name is Dale. Nice. Oh. Claire, I'm doing this for you. You're getting tested for coronavirus for Claire. If it weren't for the, the television show, The Bachelorette, you wouldn't get tested. I don't believe that. You're better than that, Dale. Hey ladies, <laughs> I get tested for a deadly disease for you. Marry me. I hate this guy. I hate most of the guys, um, especially Clark Kent here. I went to Harvard. Of course, I'm a very you know proud alum. He went to Harvard, and that's really the only character trait he has. They call it the H bomb. When you drop that, people's like, oh, all right, okay, guy. Okay, guy. <laughs> okay, guy. So anyway, the guys arrive, and by arrive, I mean uh, they were all at the resort quarantining for two weeks, but then they get to finally meet Claire, once everyone's cleared, of course. Be officially cleared? So by the time the show starts, we all know that Claire is gonna leave the show with Dale. We don't know how it's gonna go down, uh, but 
but we know. In the first few minutes of the first episode, they already show you in like a hundred different ways that she's leaving with Dale. I just don't know how you can be so sure so quick. You're not watching to see what happens because they, they tell you that at every turn. It does feel like I just met my husband. You're watching to see how it happens, how it unfolds, and usually it's a disappointment. Congratulations, you've just blown up the Bachelorette. I'm pretty sure they give the host, Chris Harrison, a script with like lines he has to hit so that they can put things into the previews. Because when he find they, they play this line One up the bachelorette. in like every preview for the season. And when he finally says it, it doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> the context is so, it's so out of place. So in your mind right now, is this over? Yeah. Okay. Congratulations, you've just blown up The Bachelorette. Editing Jarvis again. To me, this clip is clearly something that, clearly, something that they had decided upon because there's contracts involved. It, it just feels like they staged it so they got coverage for the storyline of the show. Because otherwise, yeah, I feel like there'd have to be more of a conversation other than like, Okay, yeah, all right, you've blown up the Bachelorette. That's that's all you had to do. You said those magic words and the Bachelorette's been blown. They also make it seem like the men in protest of Dale getting all of Claire's time uh, unionize and stage a walkout. How about the rest of us walk out? In reality, we never see this clip and also Dale is in the clip, so I'm pretty sure they were just going to lunch. How about the rest of us walk out? Look, Dale is right there. He's like, yeah. <laughs> this Dale guy. I'm leaving too. But who is Dale? Why is Dale? What's Dale's deal? I have watched all of this footage more than once and I can't really tell you much about Dale. Uh, he's just hot. <laughs> I just, he doesn't ever say anything that interesting. I, I really do feel this is going to be special. Okay. He feels kind of like an NPC in like a role playing game that just like speaks in canned phrases or like a Hallmark card or something. I can't explain sometimes through words, but yeah. you just have a feel. For example, during a group date that was about love languages, which by the way, a group date is the only way to successfully date 30 people at once. During the words of affirmation section, all the dudes are like reading poetry and putting a lot of thought into their words. All but one will leave in despair, but it's all for one and one for Claire. And Dale just says, I'm here. And I'm here. It's a little worrying that these guys look so concerned about a communication exercise. <laughs> that can't be a good sign. I have a lot of layers to me and I just can't wait to peel back those layers with you and show you who I really am. I mean, I get what he's saying, but it's weird that he's like, I'm excited to pull back my layers. <laughs> I'm like, ew, it's like he's coming out of a cocoon. Be that onion, I love it. Or an onion, sure. I'm committed to giving you everything I have, like physically, emotionally. I trust you and I'm here for every bit of it. I'm pretty sure they just met. Like it's kind of weird. It's kind of, if someone said this to me on a first date, I would like run the other way. Hey, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming out. I'm ready to give myself to you emotionally, physically. <laughs> it's like, whoa, whoa, man. I think it goes without saying that I couldn't be more excited to be here for each and every moment of this. Why did it sound like he was a, <laughs> a beat poet? <laughs> I think it goes without saying that I didn't think ahead about this, <laughs> but I'm excited to be here and I'm hot. Would you like to marry me? I don't know how he can say this without knowing anything about Claire. Uh, but what's funny to me is she chews out a completely different guy in like this one-on-one -on -one conversation because he can't, say what he likes about her or because he doesn't know her that well. You knew that I was a bachelorette and you wanted to sign up, mm -hmm. but you don't know anything about me? I don't, I don't know, you per obviously don't know you on a personal level and uh -huh. don't know your history. Uh -huh. So I guess he should have just said a bunch of nothing like Dale just did. I think it goes without saying that I couldn't be more excited to be here. The show spends so much time talking about how great Dale is without ever showing us any of his greatness. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great guy, but show don't tell, Bachelor Nation. But it kind of doesn't matter because Claire has made her mind up. <laughs> she doesn't give any other guy the time of day. I like Dale, that's not a surprise. Nor is this more apparent than the physical touch portion of this date. Claire and every other guy before this, it was like very light touching. And as soon as Claire was like, I know who this is, it was like, Bleh. Oh, I know this smell. <sighs> and these poor guys are on the sideline like, 
I didn't come on this show to be a cuck. I was excited for this, like, to be able to obviously touch Claire. <laughs> my number one thing was just to make sure that she felt my strong presence. I think it just means this muscles. <laughs> my main thing was like to show Claire my muscles so that she knew I was me, and then we could just make out in front of the other guys. Before we dive too deep on Dale, let's delve into some of the other dudes. Like there's Ivan. Uh, who likes chess, and that's the only thing we ever learn about him. The game of chess means a lot to me. It's something I've played with my younger brother and my dad my entire life, and it's especially important to me because the game of chess really got my younger brother through some really dark times in his life, and I gave you the queen. I'm gonna hold on and be your king hopefully one day. There's Blake who broke a rule by contacting Claire before the show started. You're the only guy that reached out to me the entire time. I didn't want to bring this up but there are these weird rules that we have to follow for the show. So you broke the rule. Yeah. But Claire lets him off the hook and he takes that as a cue to just interrupt Claire whenever the f he wants, <laughs> just to show how committed he is. Excuse That's the right me. direction for me. Ah, hi! Sorry. Oh my God, hi! 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 You know, a little surprise to see me. Yeah! Uh, Jay, do you mind if I sit up for just five minutes? I mean, were you didn't you lose? And then there's Jason. He was like bottled up his emotions really deep. And whenever he talks about his past, it sounds like he's killed someone. We've seen some things that are dangerous, damaging, and hurtful. There's a reason we are closed off. Jason, what have you done? And last and definitely least is Yosef, uh, who sucks ass. <laughs> so before I talk about Yosef, who I hate, I should probably explain who he is because as I'm watching back the footage now, I just get immediately upset with him and start ranting. He's a medical device salesman. I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> According to his official bachelorette bio, he doesn't shy away from controversy. And I think that just means that he gives his opinion where it wasn't asked. For example, there's this moment where nobody immediately steps up to have one-on-one -on -one time with Claire. No one shows up. And Claire gets upset. And when she chews the guys out about this, uh, Yosef asks to speak for the group and Claire shuts him down, uh, which is really funny. I'll take a moment to speak for the group. I don't think, I don't think that was You don't need attention. to speak for the group. But it's also his villain origin story because he sucks even worse from then on. I was absolutely appalled at the group date that occurred yesterday. I mean, there's naked guys, you know, doing, or playing dodgeball together. I think she had the guys play dodgeball and Yosef is like, this does not fit with my morals. You're an embarrassment to my daughter. My daughter saw me doing that. My family saw me doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, think of the thought that they would have. They might think, hey, uh, dad doesn't have a stick up his ass. <laughs> think of the example that would be setting. That's why you were not on that date. Well, I'm glad I wasn't. He wasn't even on the date. He heard about it secondhand. He didn't even see the footage. You're completely classless, Claire. Classless? You like elitist piece of shit. <laughs> what the f Dude, you should never talk to somebody like this. Jesus Christ, this is so condescending. He doesn't let Claire talk. And then when she tries to remove herself from the situation, he follows her and yells at her about how she's not fit to be the mother of his child. You're not fit to be a mother to my child. It's disgusting and aggressive and just a bad, he should have just left. He should have just left the show. If he didn't agree with it, what is he, why does he need to prove his point? Just bounce, dude. My daughter saw me doing that. My family saw me doing that. Sorry, I really hate that guy. <laughs> I just can't, like, where do you get off talking to somebody like that? It's like dehumanizing. And he starts age shaming Claire. I expected way more from the oldest bachelorette. Bro, what? You don't know what you, how can you be so immature? No, 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 no. This entire no, time. No, stop. Do not stop me. Don't, I listen to you not this entire time. Me. How could you lack so much tact? How could you lack so much class? Talking about classless, <laughs> man. All right, sorry, I hate that guy. So anyway, back to Dale, because again, the season is about Dale. Dale isn't, isn't very respectful of the other guy's time because he always seems to interrupt. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. whoa, get out Wrong of here. Door? <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm gonna respect you. Ah. What? I, 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 I didn't know uh, somebody was in here. I was just kind of roaming. Was, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Do you wanna come on over? There's a point where Dale asks to talk to Claire first in the night, um, 
and he's like, we'll be above board, we'll all, it's all fair, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it'll only take 10 minutes. If I can speak with Claire first, even if it's for five minutes, I would greatly appreciate that. And then he steals Claire for like two hours, which is, I guess it's fine, but it doesn't say very much about his character, you know? It all just feels weird. Like he's just showing up in places where he's not supposed to be. And what makes him think that he can do that? People say they've talked before the show, but they, they swear on it that they haven't. Did you lie to all of Bachelor Nation? 100% no. And I could wholeheartedly attest to this on my dad's grave. Yeah, that's so intense. Nobody was asking you to do that. Yeah, you could have just said no. I promise. <laughs> also, when she meets Dale, he doesn't really say much. And then he walks away and she's like, I think I just met my husband. So it, is it all first impressions? Apparently she stalked him on social media or something. I, who's to say? But what we can say is that Dale treats the show like he already won and so does Claire. So all the other guys are like, why are we here? <laughs> and that's a great question. So the disdain with Dale boils to a head and uh, they have an, they have like a roast date where everybody's like roasting people. Dale is in the audience and a bunch of the guys are like roasting the other guys and Claire, I guess. And everybody just roasts Dale. What's one thing y'all don't know about Dale? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, because he doesn't shut the f up. Claire takes huge offense to this uh, because you can't talk about Dale like that. Dale's my husband. I mean, Dale is a contestant on the show just like the rest of you and you should, be kind to my husband, Dale. I mean, be kind to Dale, the father of my children, Dale, the, uh, just be kind to Dale. I, who, who, what's his name again? This guy didn't even talk about Dale and she's like interrogating him about Dale. I have not brought up another man to her, but she asked me directly about, about Dale. And then at the end of that date, you know, you're supposed to give the rose to one of the guys and then you go out for dinner or something, have a one-on-one -on -one chat. It's nice. Uh, Claire gives the rose to herself. <laughs> Which, behind the scenes, apparently, was the moment <laughs> where the ABC producers were like, oh, we need to <laughs> we need to wrap this shit up, because uh, let's get Tasha in here, stat. <laughs> so then Claire decides to just run away with Dale, and then she has to break the news to all the guys. What I came here for, I think I found. And it's with Dale. Most of the guys seem to take it okay, but they're like a little frazzled, which you could expect. Um, but people seem to be concerned about Jason, which again begs the question, who did Jason kill? <laughs> it sucks. Thank you. I hit bottom when I gave my last hug to her and I said goodbye. Then when she breaks up with 29 guys all at once, uh, one of the guys, Kenny, who I don't, I don't really know what, where Kenny's been all season or any of these people, there was like an, there's so many people. Normally, during this show, they can cut to somebody and you can be like, who's that? And for this show, it's like most people they cut to and I'm like, I've never seen you before. Kenny asks for an apology from Claire for falling in love with Dale and wanting to leave the show. So you should apologize for faking it when you should have admitted you were in love with Dale after the first night. I don't think she owes anybody an apology <laughs> for, for the record. Uh, this is, this is television. They knew what they were getting themselves into going on the marriage game show. After checking my notes, um, it appears that the point of the show is that <laughs> the bachelorette finds someone to marry. Um, so, yeah, seems like uh, <laughs> seems like this is uh, this is a legal move by Claire. <laughs> then Claire gives her famous speech about not apologizing for love, um, which is nice. But it is a weird vibe for her to have to like defend herself to all of these dudes. Ah, it's weird, it's weird. I'll apologize if I wasted your time. I'll apologize if I hurt you, but I'm not gonna apologize for love. So then the question becomes, is Dale gonna propose? Cause Chris Harrison goes to Dale and is like, yo Dale, um, she rejected all the other guys to be with you. And he was like, I see. <laughs> and then Chris Harrison n nearly bullies this man into uh, like an answer about whether or not he wants to propose. Cause he's like, oh yeah, I'm already on the phone with, with Neil Lane. I've, his, his ring is on the way. Are you gonna be there to put the ring on Claire's finger and, <laughs> and propose to this girl so that you guys can leave and we can fly Tasha in? There's something I need to tell you. had tuna fish for lunch. And also Dale is coming over to propose. So let's let's get this show on the road. Just wanna say, we are so proud of you. They say this just to fuck 
with Claire and get a reaction shot. Like, like there's any world in which Dale doesn't propose to her after the way that they've set this season up. So that's pretty much the Claire season as of right now. They're gonna have a tell-all with Claire and Dale, um, which kind of sounds like a horse. <laughs> this trusty old steed, it's a Claire and Dale. <laughs> Prior to this, they start teasing Tasha's season by having her come out of the water like the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they edit some of the dudes like not being excited about Tasha, which is bullshit. Because Tasha's like the biggest catch the Bachelor has ever had. So like, I feel like again they just all this is in the editing and none of it's real because it's all smoke and mirrors with this show. I feel bad for Tasha because she's inherited this pile of broken men and has to pick up the pieces. And that's where things are right now. I am excited for Tasha's season because I think that Tasha's like a rational, nice person, and uh, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see how the show like works with her. So far, um, the promos give me a little worry because they've got Tasha up here in a newspaper gown. <laughs> like you couldn't have bought Tasha a designer dress. You had to. She had to make it out of paper mache newspapers herself. I know a lot of people were asking me to talk about this, uh, and I wanted to because. It was a tra this was a train wreck that I couldn't look away from. Um, I, I wish the best uh, for Clarendale, <laughs> the horse, and um, I uh, I hope yeah I hope I hope things work out. Uh, fun fact: Claire's parents' names are Lily and James, so um, Claire's. The boy who lived. <laughs> She's Harry Potter. Clary Potter. <laughs> Thanks to Evan Neary for sending me a message on Instagram. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, do what Evan did. Okay, goodbye.